Hello friends, my name is Lily and I read a new book last night. We all know I love Jurassic Park. Behold the necklace, behold the dinosaurs. I put these dinosaurs up here just for this video because they don't have a home and usually they just sit in my drawer. Today they can breathe. So this is a book by the same author. It came out in June. It's called Dragon Teeth by Michael Crichton. Dragon Teeth is way down here and you might need a magnifying glass to see it, but I promise you that's what it says. I don't know how I didn't know this already, but Michael Crichton is not around anymore. Hasn't been for almost 10 years. But apparently this book was found on his computer and was published by his family. I'm wondering how complete it was because this is like pretty complete. So if they just took it straight off the computer, I'm impressed, but I feel like someone probably came in and revised it. Haven't found out for sure yet but I'll let you know if I do. So I'm gonna give you my no-spoiler thoughts first, and then I'll let you know when the spoilers are gonna show up. Crushing dreams since forever. So Dragon Teeth is a Western historical fiction. It's about this Yale student who makes a bet that he is going to go spend the summer with this wacky professor of paleontology out in the West. This is set in a time in American history where the East is trying to become a new country and the West is every man for himself. There's a war going on between the Native Americans and the US Army, so it's a very tense and dangerous time in the West. And this student, I don't think he He's ever done the dangerous thing in his life. So it's quite the adventure. It's based on a large number of real people and real events and at the end of the book they tell you exactly what was what, which I love so much. It's the worst when you read a historical fiction and they don't tell you what was historical and what was fiction. So you're sitting there believing that Abraham Lincoln saw Hamilton when it was first on Broadway and you're like, wait a second something's not right. It's a very action-packed entertaining story and it's very short. If you're looking for character development though, this is probably not the story for you. The characters in this story are simply used as a means to an end to tell about the events. The characters don't have a lot of depth so you can't really connect with them very well. So that took me a little bit to get used to but when I realized that I was only supposed to be an observer of the story and not really be in everyone's heads, I was able to enjoy it a lot and it was very 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 entertaining. I really like this storytelling style because it's nostalgic. It feels like you're sitting around a campfire and someone is recounting some old war story or something. It's as though the author is simply recounting things from memory from his own perspective. It's told in the way that people actually tell stories to each other. It's not about characters so much because we can only guess what other people are feeling. The focus is more on the events and on a person's individual perception of the events. A lot of questions are left unanswered because that's just the way life goes, which can be frustrating, but I also really appreciate it. It's actually really refreshing to read a book like this. I was definitely reminded of Jurassic Park because of the dinosaur aspect. Notice any similarities? Although it's definitely very different. Jurassic Park has been described as a techno thriller, which is so perfect. I love that so much. And Dragon Teeth didn't have any techno anything because this is set in the 1800s. But they're both situated on the timeline of scientific discovery. So it's like you're walking along down the road. Oh, hello, 1800s. Oh, you keep walking. Oh, hello, 1900s. What are we doing here? So they seem connected because they are in a way. It's like history sort of. I think it's so fun that we're just as excited about dinosaurs now as we were way back when, when they were first discovering dinosaurs. Dinosaurs are really cool. That's all I have to say about that. On my Goodreads review, I described this book as being a mix between The Great Gatsby and Back to the Future 2 with dinosaurs. So if you can imagine that and if it sounds interesting to you, which I hope it does, then you know exactly where to go. I enjoyed this a lot. I gave it four whole stars, almost five. That's gonna be all for no spoilers. I wish you much luck in your journey to read a book that doesn't give you a lot of information about your characters super good. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you for watching. And now we go to spoilers. Spoiler time. William Johnson's actions make no sense to me. I felt like there was a lot being left out of the story because I didn't understand what would compel him to do the things that he was doing. Why was he suddenly willing to put so much work into learning photography and traveling out west when it was implied that he had barely worked a day in his life? Sure, there's a bet to be won, but at what cost? If someone was gonna pay me a thousand dollars to travel into dangerous territory for a summer, I would say to them, 
hey now, is this really a good idea? And is this really worth my time? I'm gonna have to buy photography equipment to go. How much does the photography equipment cost? Am I really getting my money's worth here? There's an obvious transformation when you compare the before and after. And by the end of the book, he's killed men and he isn't afraid of anyone. But it's something that you have to pick up for yourself because you don't know what he's thinking when he's making his choices. I don't know how he feels about his family. I don't know what career he was trying to pursue. It may have said it in the book and I might have just ignored it. I don't know if he has any friends. Somehow I still ended up being completely invested in it, even without having any background information on a lot of the characters. Or not background information, that was supplied. Any current information. So much happens in such a short amount of time that it feels like you're just flying through. So when you just sit down and you just listen to the story that you're being told, I found that this made it a lot more fun. Michael Crichton was a really good storyteller. He knows how to keep you interested and does away with the petty details such as feelings and emotions. It's weird not hearing a character's thought process when that's what you're used to. And I've decided that I actually like how minimalistic all the characters were because you're given just enough information to know kind of who who they are, that anything they do from that point on, you can make sense of. I appreciate that. It just feels like there's so many mis missing pieces. I guess I'm still getting over it a little bit. I love the spoilers that are thrown in at the end of a chapter sometimes, where it says like, little did he know that his life was about to become much worse. Those are cool on their own. It creates the interest, and then he actually delivers with something so frustrating that you want to throw the book into a trash compactor. I love how he's not afraid to carry out the worst case scenario, and yet everything always works out in the end. I really like Michael Crichton's writing. I could talk about it for a really long time, it fascinates me. But I guess I'll talk about the specifics of the book now. I had a theory about Marsh and Cope. During the chapter where Cope invites Marsh to dinner, but then Marsh ends up inviting himself. They're so in sync. They know each other so well. Anyways, Johnson learns that they both had very similar upbringings and that their paths had crossed many times in their lives and I thought they could be brothers. They were acting exactly like Sherlock and Mycroft Holmes, so I thought that maybe they were pretending not to be related because they hated each other so much and they were putting on a show of intelligent civility and yet you can still see the fiery hate burning in their eyes. That was my theory. But then I found out that they were based on real people, so I think that my theory has probably been thrown out the window, but that could have been really awesome. I loved when Johnson started using his photography to make him money in Deadwood. It was so funny picturing all these tough guys sitting down in a portrait studio, like a JC Penny or something. They sit down with their cowboy hats and their straw and their guns. Deadwood sounds like a really rough town, but I think that was my favorite location in the whole story. Did anyone else notice that there was a lot of money being exchanged when Johnson went to Deadwood, but there were never any exact numbers when he left? That's kind of frustrating to me because I want to know if he actually paid everyone back because everyone was making such a big deal about oh you better give me my money. I'm so curious that I might go back through sections of the book to see if I can add up a grand total. If I have some free time I might do that. It sounds kind of fun. I guess that was one of those details that wasn't focused on a lot because it wasn't the most important thing but it was made to seem like an important thing so it became important to me because he was being kept there because he couldn't pay back his debts. So did he pay back his debts or did he just escape in the night and now he's got a whole town full of people who hate him? These are the questions we must ask. My favorite part in the whole book was when Marsh and Johnson crossed paths when Johnson was on his way back home. Marsh was heading out to look for Johnson. He's like, have you seen the man by this description? And Johnson's like, oh dang, that's me. <gasps> no, I haven't. Uh, best of luck to you. And then someone calls, Johnson, you ready to go? And Marsh is just like, Mmm, busted. That was awesome. I wonder if Marsh actually knew the entire time that it was Johnson, and Johnson thought he was tricking Marsh, but he wasn't, because it seems like that's the sort of thing he would be on top of. Oh, and back to Deadwood. Johnson photographed a murder where the murderer was the most notoriously violent man in the town, and he willingly produced the picture that he took, and everyone knew that he took, as evidence against this man? I just still can't believe he did that. If it was me and I had a picture of a murder, I would say, well, time to go throw it against a rock and break it into a billion pieces. I would not be so bold as to say, yeah, sure, you can go give that to the sheriff. I don't mind. They don't even have a sheriff. They don't even have a real jail. They don't have any law. 
What did he think that was gonna do? There were a lot of face palm moments in this book, but it was such a great story. And I forget the guy's name, but Johnson's bodyguard on his travels home, the one who was conspiring with Marsh, I loved that whole situation, how you thought they had betrayed each other, and then there was the negotiations happening, and Emily, if that is her real name, was like, man, why aren't you out there? You know, he's stalling for you, right? And he's like, oh dang, better go make some fake bones. I loved this book. I'd read this again. If you have any favorite favorite parts, please share them in the comments because I'd love to reminisce. And what did you think of the storytelling style, the lack of character development, and all the plot twisty moments in general? These things fascinate me and I'm totally going to be thinking about them for like another week. I could talk about these books all day. I wish I had like a real book club, like a group of people here so that I wasn't just spouting out my thoughts so that we could bounce thoughts off each other. That's a dream of mine I think. Start a book club. Maybe an exclusively Michael Crichton book club. That would be fun. Last us about a year, maybe less. We could reread. I'd be fine with that. So that's gonna be all. Thanks for watching until the end. Again, my name is Lily. Welcome to my channel where I do lots of book reviews, sometimes movie reviews, vlogs, art, you name it. I'll probably be doing it at some point. I hope you have an awesome day and you'll see me next time. Goodbye.